Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose, CSI, CIE, FRS was a polymath, physicist, biologist, biophysicist, botanist, archaeologist, as well as an early writer of science fiction. Living in British-controlled India, he pioneered the investigation of radio and microwave optics made very significant contributions to plant science, and laid the foundations of experimental science in the Indian subcontinent. I Tripoli named him one of the fathers of radio science. He is considered the father of Bengali science fiction. He also invented the Kreskograph. A crater on the moon has been named in his honor. Born in my Men Singh, Bengal presidency during the British Raj, Bose graduated from St. Xavier's College, Calcutta. He then went to the University of London to study medicine, but could not pursue studies in medicine because of health problems. Instead, he conducted his research with the Nobel laureate Lord Rayleigh at Cambridge and returned to India. He then joined the Presidency College of University of Calcutta as a professor of physics. There, despite racial discrimination and a lack of funding and equipment, Bose carried on his scientific research. He made remarkable progress in his research of remote wireless signaling and was the first to use semiconductor junctions to detect radio signals. However, instead of trying to gain commercial benefit from this invention, Bose made his inventions public in order to allow others to further develop his research. Bose subsequently made a number of pioneering discoveries in plant physiology. He used his own invention, the Kreskograph, to measure plant response to various stimuli, and thereby scientifically proved parallelism between animal and plant tissues. Although Bose filed for a patent for one of his inventions because of peer pressure, his reluctance to any form of patenting was well known. To facilitate his research, he constructed automatic recorders capable of registering extremely slight movements. These instruments produced some striking results, such as Boss's demonstration of an apparent power of feeling in plants, exemplified by the quivering of injured plants. His books include Response in the Living and Non-Living and the Nervous Mechanism of Plants, Early Life and Education. Sir Jagadish Chandra Bose was born in My Men Singh, Bengal Presidency, on 30 November 1858. His father, Bhagawan Chandra Bose, was a Brahmin leader of the Brahm Samaj and worked as a deputy magistrate, assistant commissioner in Faridpur, Bardaman and other places. Boss's education started in a vernacular school, because his father believed that one must know one's own mother tongue before beginning English, and that one should know also one's own people. Speaking at the Bikrampur conference in 1915, Bose said, At that time, sending children to English schools was an aristocratic status symbol. In the vernacular school, to which I was sent, the son of the Muslim attendant of my father sat on my right side, and the son of a fisherman sat on my left. They were my playmates. I listened spellbound to their stories of birds, animals and aquatic creatures. Perhaps these stories created in my mind a keen interest in investigating the workings of nature. When I returned home from school accompanied by my school fellows, my mother welcomed and fed all of us without discrimination. It was because of my childhood friendship with them that I could never feel that there were creatures who might be labeled low caste. I never realized that there existed a problem common to the two communities, Hindus and Muslims. Bose joined the Hare School in 1869 and then Street, Xavier's School at Kolkata. In 1875, he passed the entrance examination of University of Calcutta and was admitted to St. Xavier's College, Calcutta, at St. Xavier's Bose came in contact with Jesuit father Eugene Lafont, who played a significant role in developing his interest in natural science. He received a bachelor's degree from University of Calcutta in 1879. Bose wanted to go to England to compete for the Indian civil service. However, his father, a civil servant himself, cancelled the plan. 
He wished his son to be a scholar, who would rule nobody but himself. Bose went to England to study medicine at the University of London. However, he had to quit because of ill health. The odour in the dissection rooms is also said to have exacerbated his illness. Through the recommendation of Ananda Mahan Bose, his brother-in-law and the first Indian Wrangler, he secured admission in Christ's College, Cambridge to study natural science. He received the Natural Science Tripos from the University of Cambridge and a BSc from the University of London in 1884. Among Boss's teachers at Cambridge were Lord Rayleigh, Michael Foster, James Dewar, Francis Darwin, Francis Balfour, and Sidney Vines. At the time when Bose was a student at Cambridge, Prafula Chandra Roy was a student at Edinburgh. They met in London and became intimate friends. Later he was married to Abala Bose, the renowned feminist and social worker. On the second day of a two-day seminar held on the occasion of 150th anniversary of Jagadish Chandra Bose on 28-29 July at the Asiatic Society, Kolkata Professor Shiba G. Rahab, director of the Bose Institute, Kolkata told in his valedictory address that he had personally checked the register of the Cambridge University to confirm the fact that in addition to Tripos he received an MA as well from it in 1884, joining Presidency College. Bose returned to India in 1885, carrying a letter from Fawcett, the economist to Lord Ripon, Viceroy of India. The principal, H. Tawney, protested against the appointment but had to accept it. Bose was not provided with facilities for research. On the contrary, he was a victim of racialism with regard to his salary. In those days, an Indian professor was paid Rs. 200 per month, while his European counterpart received Rs. 300 per month. Since Bose was officiating, he was offered a salary of only Rs. 100 per month. As a form of protest, Bose refused to accept the salary check and continued his teaching assignment for three years without accepting any salary. After time, the director of public instruction and the principal of the presidency college relented, and Boss's appointment was made permanent with retrospective effect. He was given the full salary for the previous three years in a lump sum. Presidency College lacked a proper laboratory. Bose had to conduct his research in a small 24-square-foot room. He devised equipment for the research with the help of one and trained Tin Smith. The college routine was made as arduous as possible for him, so that he could not have the time he needed for investigation. After his daily grind, he carried out his research far into the night, in a small room in his college. Moreover, the policy of the British government for its colonies was not conducive to attempts of original research. Bose spent his own money for making experimental equipment. Within a decade of his joining Presidency College, he emerged a pioneer in the incipient research field of wireless waves, radio research. The Scottish theoretical physicist James Clerk Maxwell mathematically predicted the existence of electromagnetic radiation of diverse wavelengths, but he died in 1879 before his prediction was experimentally verified. Between 1886 and 1888, German physicist Heinrich Hertz published the results of his experiments that showed the existence of electromagnetic waves in free space. Subsequently, British physicist Oliver Lodge, who had also been researching electromagnetic, conducted a commemorative lecture in August 1894 on the quasi-optical nature of Hertzian waves, and demonstrated their similarity to light and vision including reflection and transmission at distances up to 50 meters. Lodge's work was published it in book form and caught the attention of scientists in different countries including Bose in India. The first remarkable aspect of Bose's follow-up microwave research was that he reduced the waves to the millimeter level. He realized the disadvantages of long waves for studying their light-light properties. During a November 1894 public demonstration at Town Hall of Kolkata, Bose ignited gunpowder and rang a bell at a distance using millimeter range wavelength microwaves. 
Lieutenant Governor Sir William Mackenzie witnessed Boss's demonstration in the Kolkata Town Hall. Bose wrote in a Bengali essay, Adrusia al -yok, the invisible light can easily pass through brick walls, buildings etc. Therefore, messages can be transmitted by means of it without the mediation of wires. Boss's first scientific paper, on polarization of electric rays by double refracting crystals, was communicated to the Asiatic Society of Bengal in May 1895, within a year of Lodge's paper. His second paper was communicated to the Royal Society of London by Lord Rayleigh in October 1895. In December 1895, the London journal The Electrician published Boss's paper on a new electropolariscope. At that time, the word coherer, coined by Lodge, was used in the English-speaking world for Hertz yarn wave receivers or detectors. The electrician readily commented on Boss's coherer. The Englishman quoted from the electrician and commented as follows. Should Professor Bose succeed in perfecting and patenting his coherer, we may in time see the whole system of coast lighting throughout the navigable world revolutionized by a Bengali scientist working single-handed in our presidency college laboratory. Bose planned to perfect his coherer, but never thought of patenting it. Bose went to London on a lecture tour in 1896 and met Italian inventor Guglielmo Marconi who had been developing a radio wave wireless telegraphy system for over a year and was trying to market it to the British Post Service. In an interview, Bose expressed disinterest in commercial telegraphy and suggested others use his research work. In 1899, Bose announced the development of a iron mercury iron coherer with telephone detector in a paper presented at the Royal Society, London. Place in radio development Bose work in radio microwave optics was specifically directed towards studying the nature of the phenomenon and was not an attempt to develop radio into a communication medium. His experiments took place during this same period when Guglielmo Marconi was making breakthroughs on a radio system specifically designed for wireless telegraphy and others were finding practical applications for radio waves such as Russian physicist Alexander Stepanovich Popov radio wave base lightning detector, also inspired by Lodge's experiment. Although Boss's work was not related to communication, he, like Lodge and other laboratory experimenters, probably had an influence on other inventors trying to develop radio as communications medium. Bose was the first to use a semiconductor junction to detect radio waves, and he invented various now commonplace microwave components. In 1954, Pearson and Brittain gave priority to Bose for the use of a semiconducting crystal as a detector of radio waves. In fact, further work at millimeter wavelengths was almost non-existent for the following 50 years. In 1897, Bose described to the Royal Institution in London his research carried out in Kolkata at millimetre wavelengths. He used waveguides, horn antennas, dielectric lenses, various polarizers, and even semiconductors at frequencies as high as 60 GHz. Much of his original equipment is still in existence, especially at the Bose Institute in Kolkata. A 1.3 mm multi-beam receiver now in use on the NRAO 12-meter telescope, Arizona, U.S., incorporates concepts from his original 1897 papers. Sir Neville Mott, Nobel laureate in 1977 for his own contributions to solid-state electronics, remarks that, J.C. Bose was at least 60 years ahead of his time. In fact, he had anticipated the existence of P-type and N-type semiconductors, plant research. His major contribution in the field of biophysics was the demonstration of the electrical nature of the conduction of various stimuli in plants which were earlier thought to be of a chemical nature. These claims were later proven experimentally. 
He was also the first to study the action of microwaves in plant tissues and corresponding changes in the cell membrane potential. He researched the mechanism of the seasonal effect on plants, the effect of chemical inhibitors on plant stimuli and the effect of temperature. From the analysis of the variation of the cell membrane potential of plants under different circumstances, he hypothesized that plants can feel pain, understand affection etc. Study of metal fatigue and cell response. Bose performed a comparative study of the fatigue response of various metals and organic tissue in plants. He subjected metals to a combination of mechanical, thermal, chemical, and electrical stimuli and noted the similarities between metals and cells. Boss's experiments demonstrated a cyclical fatigue response in both stimulated cells and metals, as well as a distinctive cyclical fatigue and recovery response across multiple types of stimuli in both living cells and metals. Bose documented a characteristic electrical response curve of plant cells to electrical stimulus as well as the decrease and eventual absence of this response in plants treated with anesthetics or poison. The response was also absent in zinc treated with oxalic acid. He noted a similarity in reduction of elasticity between cooled metal wires and organic cells, as well as an impact on the recovery cycle period of the metal. Science Fiction In 1896, Bose wrote Nirudesha Kaini a short story that was later expanded and added to Abiata Collection in 1921 with the new title Palatak Tufin. It was one of the first works of Bengali science fiction. It has been translated into English by Bodhisattva Chattopadhyaya, Bose and Patents. The inventor of wireless telecommunications, Bose was not interested in patenting his invention. In his Friday evening discourse at the Royal Institution, London, he made public his construction of the coherer. Thus the electric engineer expressed surprise that no secret was at any time made as to its construction, so that it has been open to all the world to adopt it for practical and possibly money-making purposes. Bose declined an offer from a wireless apparatus manufacturer for signing a remunerative agreement. Bose also recorded his attitude towards patents in his inaugural lecture at the foundation of the Bose Institute on 30 November 1917. Legacy Bose's place in history has now been re-evaluated. He is now credited with inventing the first wireless detection device, discovering millimeter-length electromagnetic waves, and being a pioneer in the field of biophysics. Many of his instruments are still on display and remain largely usable now. Over 100 years later, they include various antennas, polarizers, and waveguides, which remain in use in modern forms today. To commemorate his birth centenary in 1958, the JBNSTS scholarship program was started in West Bengal. In the same year, India issued a postage stamp bearing his portrait. On 14 September 2012, Boss's experimental work in millimeter band radio was recognized as an IEEE milestone in electrical and computer engineering, the first such recognition of a discovery in India. Publications Journals Nature published about 27 papers. Bose J.C. on electromotive wave accompanying mechanical disturbance in metals in contact with electrolyte. Proc. Roy. Sock, 70, 273-294, DOI, 10.1098, RSPL, 1902.0029, Bose J.C., Sula Response Electricade Alama Thierry Vivantare Anime Summa Sirune Excitation, De Proceeds d'Observation de la Réponse de la Thierry, Vivanta, Journal de Physique 4, 481 to 491 books response in the living and non-living 1902 plant response as a means of physiological investigation 1906 comparative electrophysiology a physico-physiological study 1907 researches on irritability of plants 1913 physiology of the ascent of sap 1923 
The Physiology of Photosynthesis, 1924, The Nervous Mechanisms of Plants, 1926, Plant Autographs and Their Revelations, 1927, Growth and Tropic Movements of Plants, 1929, Motor Mechanism of Plants, 1928, Other J.C. Bose Collected Physical Papers, New York, New York. Longmans, Green & Co., 1927, Abiacta, 1922, Honours, Companion of the Order of the Indian Empire, Companion of the Order of the Star of India, Knight Bachelor, Fellow of the Royal Society, Member of the Vienna Academy of Sciences, 1928, President of the 14th Session of the Indian Science Congress in 1927, Member of Finnish Society of Sciences and Letters in 1929, Member of the League of Nations Committee for Intellectual Cooperation, Founding Fellow of the National Institute of Sciences of India.